Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 112. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. Yeah, I, I didn't realize they were a Czech um, dev team until the last sale, because they literally had their games on sale, then they stopped being on sale for about two days and then they went back on sale for the uh, autumn sale. Um, but the last sale was actually for Czech developers. And when I saw Eurotruck was on there, I was like, ah, oh, interesting. There weren't any other games on there other than Eurotruck that I was actually interested in. But I do think it's pretty cool seeing, like, other countries that develop things. I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think Car Mechanic Simulator and Playway uh, are actually based in Poland. I think they, Playway has like a huge studio with lots of different people working on different projects at the same time. Um, so that's why you see like motorcycle mechanic sim, cooking sim, car mechanic sim. Would you be able to uh, fact check that for me, Hans? If there's not too much of a hassle. Just double check if Playway is actually based in Poland or not. I'm 99% sure I've read somewhere that they're a Polish company, but I might be wrong. Imagine if it's Russia. I'd be like, oh, oh no, I'm going to get cancelled for supporting a Russian company. No. I do think this wall's a bit stupid, because, I mean, I, I don't understand war. I really don't. Other than the fact that it's all right for a video game but like, I don't see the point in war it's a weird thing but I'm not gonna get into too much depth because I can't be asked move panos you prick Red Dot Studio, yeah, Polish. Fair enough. I was right. Isn't um, Red Dot Games... Um, is that the studio that makes Car Mechanic then? I assume then Playway is the publisher. Because I don't know why my brain thought Playway was the developer. But maybe the developer is Red Dot Games then. And Playway is like Bethesda. But like again, there are there are some good games that are made by countries other than the UK and the US. To be fair, that video game development, right, that a lot of people assume that they are made by like I'm gonna sneeze. Ah, really bad. That was a big sneeze. Fucking hell. Oh, Jesus. But yeah, a lot of people assume I uh, just sneezed my absolute ass off and then I'm going to continue my point. Uh, a lot of people assume that, like, video game development is like, oh, it's so American, it's so British. Like, Surprisingly, I think the US, like the UK is one of the biggest when it comes to video game development, hands down. Um, there are so many UK studios that video games have. I think a very large majority is made in the UK. All of Codemasters games are based in the UK, um, I believe. 99% sure on that one. Rockstar Games. Um, I'm not sure whether Red 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 Dead Redemption 
I'm not sure where that studio is based. I'm 99% sure that's in Canada. But the actual main Rockstar Studios, and specifically the one that makes GTA, based in Scotland, I believe. Up at the north of the UK. Um, but yeah, Rockstar Games itself, as a company, is, I believe, originally from the UK. I, b I believe it's now been, like, taken over by an American company. I th uh, it's obviously Take-Two now that owns Rockstar. And I believe Take-Two is American. But I'm not 100% sure. It does seem a very American company, but... But like a, a, a lot of people, when it comes to video games, just assume that they're either made in the UK or the US. But there's a lot of game, a lot of like I believe Need for Speed and Ghost Games, like Rivals, um, 2015. If you say 2016, you're a prick. It's Need for Speed 2015. Um, Payback and Heat. I believe they were all made in the Swedish studio. Rockstar security and stuff is top notch. Um, I mean, no matter how top notch it's going to be, Rockstar is a company that's going to be targeted. So, no matter how their security is, it's they're going to be targeted big time. I think Rockstar actually has a very good security on all of their data and stuff like that because you think people have been like hyping up GTA for how many years? GTA 6? 5, 6 years? Maybe more? And we've only just had a leak from that game from Rockstar. When you think games like Codemasters games that have been in development for months can get leaked like that. You can see other users' IPs and other crap just by opening developer window on browser. I mean... Isn't it quite easy to get other people's IPs anyways? You can't really do much with an IP address. You need a lot more information. Because otherwise, the whole internet will be unsecure as fuck. I think you need more than just an IP address, so... By all means, find my IP address. I don't care. It's not gonna... Do much, unless you've got the other information you need for it. Mm, fair enough. If they're giving you the other details, then yeah, maybe... Maybe that's something that needs changing. But if if that's on the official Rockstar website, then how the fuck are they, like, getting other players' IPs? Unless you're, like, going on the Rockstar social and you're, like, going on their profile and then finding it that way. But surely that wouldn't be... I mean, that's pretty secure, if you ask me. Have you ever tried stealing a lollipop from a kid's hand? <laughs> just, <coughs> fucking screams their head off like they've just been stabbed. It's like it's the end of the world. <laughs> In that circumstance, that's your fucking alarm. <laughs> so yeah, pretty fucking secure then. <laughs> but yeah, that is, that is a problem that Rockstar would need to change. But like, again, going back to the original point, like, game development is just such a... It is a, a cesspit at the moment, there's no other way of putting it. It's just full of shit and stuff. Nasty. Because... Game, 
here's the thing, game developers are focusing too much on making their games look good that they're not putting any development in anything else. And it's half the CEOs of the companies and like the people that head the company's fault, but also the people that buy the games, gamers' faults. Because when you think, right, companies are making these graphics cards that are all more powerful, but they're using more power than they need to. They're using... costing more money than they need to. And all this. Just so that you can run a game at a higher resolution. By all means, you can make these games more advanced, but there has to be a point where graphics just aren't worth it for the amount of hits that video games are taking. For example, like, that new Pokemon game that came out that stutters like a bitch, why the fuck did they release that? They focused too much on, like, graphical power that by the time the game actually came out, they realized, oh shit, we can't actually make this run well. It's happening a lot with video games. It's too much, like, graphics... I'm playing Forza Motorsport 3. I'm enjoying this game. This thing runs on a fucking brick. The 360 was such an underpowered system. And yet this is running really smoothly. It looks good. I don't, I'm honestly, when I'm sat here, I'm not like, oh my god, look at the tree. It looks too pixelated for me. Ugh, I can't play this game. Shit. I can't drive this game either, apparently. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. It is, it is a bit fucked, the security issues. <laughs> like, I really don't think... If we had developers that focus on making video games look... Similar to what they look now. Like, games don't need to look any better than what God of War Ragnarok has looked. Let's be honest. There have been games that have come out in 2017 that have looked really good and don't need to look better than what they look like so I don't think game developers need to focus on making games look better graphically I think they just need to work on making them look smoother making their stories better and I mean I think that's what they did with God of War Ragnarok to be honest although Ragnarok they did do a little bit of a graphical improvement I think they focus more on making better use of the PS5 I've got to focus on this now. Better use of the PS5 and a better story. And that's what they need to focus on. A video game should be fun. And by all means, graphics are good. If they... You know, it works. I don't know. I think the handling model is going to be different of Need for Speed Unbound, but yeah, I'd, I will admit there are quite a few similarities to that. So for a game that's been in development for three years, it, it does look quite similar to Heat. Um, I would have liked to, for it to more head towards Need for Speed 2015. Been a bit more like that, but can't hate it till I've tried it. So. But EA Play gameplay should go up soon anyway. So. Alright. Here we go. Race number two. Of the final episode that we're recording today. Well no. He might mean 05. Or he might mean 1 2. You never know. But yeah, which which one are you on about, Tack? Oh my god, I can't believe you said that, because I can 100% agree with you. <laughs> a lot of people say, um, 
that Need for Speed 2012 was a really shit Need for Speed. And I think they just don't have the context of what that game was supposed to be. Um, Need for Speed 2012 is such, such an underrated game when it comes to, like... I will be honest, the crash cameras were a bit annoying. Sometimes it was just, you crash a couple too many times and it got frustrating. But it is racing. It is still a racing game. When you think about it though, that game came out in 2012. So the only systems that existed were the Xbox 360, the PS3, PC, and Nintendo Wii. I think it was, I think the Wii U had come out by that point. As a Need for Speed, it's not a game people wanted, but as a burnout game, not bad at all. Even then, I think it's a good Need for Speed. Sorry. Like, there are people that absolutely love Need for Speed Hot Pursuit that came out in 2010, but absolutely hate Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. And to those people, I think you're absolute fucking idiots. Because Need for Speed 2010 was made by the same studio that made Need for Speed... 2012 and they are two very similar games that's the only thing I didn't like about Need for Speed 2012 was it with how short the gameplay was aimed like it was aimed to be a very like you load the game up go to an event do the event You've done the event in within five minutes. Move on to the next one or shut the game down. It was a very short-paced game. Like, event, 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 event. And that game style is very much favoured towards mobile games. Um, it's very rare you see a successful game, like mobile game, that has a very long-winded format to it. And it's the same with games on console. A lot of games nowadays that have that short-paced gameplay very rarely do well or get a lot of playtime because the short-paced nature of it just doesn't make sense. <coughs> that is why I think I obviously played Need for Speed Most Wanted the day it came out on a PS Vita and that game for that system is fucking perfect now that the Steam Deck exists you can until they updated the EA launcher and now the EA launcher doesn't work on Steam Deck but when they had the old origin launcher for most of the games and it ran um, you could play Need for Speed Most Wanted on uh, what's it called you could play Need for Speed Most Wanted on um, the Steam Deck. And I kid you not, that game on the Steam Deck is such a perfect idea. Because it is that short paced stuff when you're in handheld mode. But you can play it for an hour or two on the big screen. And it's not that bad. I, I will admit... I think the PS Vita um, I think I, I will admit it does seem like a rushed game um, it seems like something they sort of wanted to make to fill out the gap in that year and they didn't put a lot of time in it um Because if, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it in 2012 when um, they sort of started development on Rivals? So I assume what they did, this is just speculation. 2010 they had Criterion make um, Hot Pursuit. Then in 2011, using some of the assets from Hot Pursuit, uh, Black Box then made The Run. 
But yeah, PSP does look weird written down. It's been so long since people have mentioned it that it's, it's become an odd thing to talk about. Uh, yeah, so 2011, Black Box did the run. Then 2012, they obviously had to rush a game out. Um, and I assume that's when Most Wanted 2012 came out. I remember when they advertised the uh, Ford... Oh, I, th I can't remember whether it was the Ford Focus or the Ford Fiesta. But there were advertisement billboards everywhere for the Ford Fiesta. The brand new Ford Fiesta. Featuring in Need for Speed Most Wanted. And these... This was like... Sort of towards the end of when you'd see like roadside advertisements. Like you don't really see them as much anymore. Because people just don't pay attention to them. Or they're like digital ones now. So they're always cycling between different things. This is like the old school days when some bloke would come with a massive roller and just roll on an advertising board at the side of the road. And there were adverts everywhere in my town that were advertising like this new Need for Speed game with the new Ford Fiesta and all that. It was like a collaboration advertisement between Need for Speed and EA and Ford. It was really cool. And I think it was that billboard that made me buy Need for Speed Most Wanted. Because I was like, that looks cool. Yeah, I mean, definitely picking up an old PSP and playing stuff like Sly Cooper is a great idea. Playing the older titles just, it brings back so much nostalgia. I think I mentioned at the start of the stream, no matter how long it's been since loading up a system, nostalgia always stays with you for some unknown reason. Yeah, the concept for 2012 was really good. But I enjoyed playing it on a handheld gaming system. I think it's a lot better on a handheld environment. When you're going out and about and you're sitting in like a car journey or whatnot. It's, it's that ideal game. There's not too much... You don't have to focus too much, but you have to focus... Um... There's a lot of content in it, it's open world, technically, even though all the races are like closed off, you can't really stray too much. It's still an open world environment. It was very enjoyable. I <laughs> guess I was gave <laughs> Um Yeah, no, I've not really played Sly Cooper at all, but There's a lot of Criterion assets from previous games with new UI. <laughs> That's fair enough. That is a fair fair statement. Um yeah, I think it's uh what is it? Need for speed. I love the Need for Speed games, don't get me wrong. I fucking love them. And it's a... It's a strange one. We gotta get eight thumbnail pictures by the t uh I got like eight thumbnails done today, so I appreciate it, Tack. Appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, I appreciate the drink as well. I need it with my sore throat, so thank you very much.
know what I really want to try and get running? <laughs> I th I think EA. I think it'd be a good idea if they did it. Because it seems to be a prime time with all these handheld gaming PCs, right? If EA give up development on Real Racing 3, start developing Real Racing 4. Don't focus too much on microtransactions. Don't make it a free game. Make it $5. Something like that. And you have to drive and work for your cars. Or you can buy, like, coins to fast track. Not too much of a hassle. Because it wouldn't be too different to what it is at the moment, but... Make it so that... There isn't a shit ton of microtransactions, basically. But make the game so that it can run on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, um, and mobile, right? Have this game across progression. Obviously be like, um, what's it called? It, it would be similar to Real Racing 3. It's obviously called Real Racing 4. And... Steam Deck. Have all these different devices that can run this one game. You have your... Your entire garage. Everywhere. You can play it on your console. You, like, that would be my ideal game. And I think Real Racing, as much as I hated how EA basically ruined Real Racing 3... I do think that that is the ideal game that could pull that off. And let's be honest, if we don't like it because of how EA's treated it, at least maybe the idea might get into a lot of developers' heads. Because by all means, we can have PC games that we can run on a Steam Deck, but what if you don't have... Like, what if you've got a Steam Deck but you don't have a desktop PC? You've got a console. So you get the game on Steam want to have your progression somewhere else like a lot more racing games need to do that it would be nice to have that progression safe rem 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 a michelin oh, i'm bleeding out of my forehead oh shit but like it, it doesn't make sense oh shit I didn't go well. Like, hmm. VW, you've just saved me money on... having a lower tax category because my car is more economical in actual, like, emissions tests. So my car's classed as more economical when it's not. So you're saving me money there. You're saving me money by being more... Fuel efficient, even though that increases the emissions that my car produces. But it's more fuel efficient, so I'm saving money there as well. Oh. I don't like that, though. You lied to me. I'm going to get more money from you. Extra money and everything is greener. Like, literally, that money that people got from VW probably went into them paying more for their road tax. For their new VW that they got. Guaranteed. <laughs> it seems so backwards. I've tried so hard and got so far. Get the fuck out of the way, you prick. There we go. Going around Spoon. Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> you bastard. You fat bastard. Like, I really think, um... I, I still don't like 
how the world has decided that electric cars has to be a future. Uh, BMW jokes aside, with proper driver, it can actually be reliable and more greener if the driver is an idiot and doesn't full throttle at every straight. Well, yeah, full throttling is um, less economical. But to be perfectly honest, you want a decent amount of throttle when you're pulling away in a car. If you're not, um, like, sort of getting going, a lot of these eco cars rely on, like, very slow acceleration. And that's kind of dangerous, to be honest. Like, from me experiencing actually driving on the road, like, electric cars don't suffer from, like, a huge amount of fuel usage when you're accelerating at full blast because it's just that's not how electricity works that's not how motors work it, it uses minuscule amount more than if you were half throttling so an electric car it's kind of irrelevant but full throttle like electric cars people full throttle no problem and those people that sort of accelerate and actually like pull away in electric cars they're a lot safer because obviously to a certain extent you don't want to like 100% throttle just to floor it to the speed limit straight away because if you've got to react to something but like some of these eco cars rely on you like literally going from 0 to 30 in like 20 seconds like, you're, you can't even do more than, like, 10% throttle for you to have some form of, like, eco rating out of it. And it's just... No. But again, if, if I go back to my original point that I was going to make... Yeah, that's fair enough. Um... The thing is, I don't like that the world has jumped to EVs. Because... I don't know. I don't think electric vehicles are the way... are the future. I think we're going to have to move to something better. And I think it would have been better if... We've had electric vehicles for years. We've had hydrogen vehicles. I think the first hydrogen vehicle was made in like... Almost 30 years ago hydrogen powered car I don't know was it early 2000s or early 90s I want to say it was early 90s but it might have been early 2000s in which case it was 20 years ago but we've had hydrogen well no one of the most renewable sources of fuel is hydrogen in my opinion and the thing is, right, if, if you're obviously harvesting just straight up hydrogen from the atmosphere and stuff like that, it's not ideal. But there's an easy way to produce hydrogen, and that's by sticking electrodes into some water. Um, they've obviously got to be, like, specific ones. But when you put electricity into water, um, with the right electrodes, you can actually produce hydrogen gas and oxygen gas right which you don't never want to light a match over that because that will fucking like that's a bomb but you can produce hydrogen gas and oxygen you harvest that hydrogen you can also harvest the oxygen and use it for like medical purposes in like hospitals and stuff like that but you produce hydrogen out of that electricity. Now, what happens when you have a hydrogen-powered car? Mix it with the oxygen that's in the air. And you get water and electricity. So you mix the two together and you've got electricity that powers the car. That's how a fuel cell hydrogen car works. Right, it's, it's quite straightforward when you know the chemistry behind how, like, hydrogen and the fuel cells work. But the way that it's, like, 
<laughs> whole lake electrocuting for huge farm of hydrogen. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, right? The electricity, the only way that that is environmentally friendly is if the electricity comes from renewable means, like wind power, solar power. If it comes from those means, then hydrogen power cars are literally the most economically friendly cars ever. The problem with EVs, um, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, I'm so economical to the planet because I'm in an EV. Well, no, you're not, because electricity doesn't just all of a sudden appear. You know, the car chargers aren't powered by, like, solar panels and stuff like that. They're charged by the national grid, which is just companies that create electricity, pump it out onto the grid, and then charge you for it. Not all the electricity that comes on the national grid is... Um, what's it called? E economically made. It's not made by solar farms and stuff like that. There are still old school, like, coal, fucking oil, electricity generators, whatnot, that still run. Which means an EV is only as economical as the country's national grid that you're in. America sure as shit is not that as economical as they make it out to be. Do 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 And yeah, so go going on from my point there's really I don't understand why companies didn't invest more in hydrogen. Like Toyota is literally the only one that's properly pushing hydrogen powered vehicles. No other companies are focusing on it. And I know people are like... Here's the thing. A lot of arguments against hydrogen power before electric became popular was the fact that, oh, but when I go to a hydrogen fuel station... Like, this would be back in, like, early 2000s. A lot of the arguments was like, well, it takes me two minutes to fuel my car with petrol... Why would I stand around and wait 10 minutes with a hydrogen car? Well, newsflash, we now wait half an hour for electric cars to charge and no one complains about that. Like, literally, if you had a hydrogen car over an electric car, hydrogen is quicker to fuel. You could go into a services, use the service, like, go to the bathroom and whatnot. By the time you've walked out, your car's pretty much fueled. With an electric car, you have to go into the services, maybe grab yourself some food, whatnot. Like, I don't understand why hydrogen just isn't so easily accepted by all these companies. Ah, oh, fuck off, you prick. Give me that position back. I will crash into your bunda. Get out of the way. Thank you. Goodbye, good sir. But yeah, I, I really think in 10 years' time, if hydrogen hasn't taken off, I doubt we'll be able to change the hydrogen for till we're all dead, probably. Because if electric properly takes over, like, once I... I mean, you think how long it's been taking to push people to electric cars, and... I mean, it's taken a good... 10 years so far and we've still got a lot of petrol cars and gas stations and stuff like that found a good gas station that fills the gas tank awfully quickly yeah and I, I mean when you think about it right 
if you've got hydrogen fuel, right, these gas station companies can still run. They just changed from gasoline pumps to hydrogen pumps. Gas stations would still exist. Whereas with electric cars, it's more done at home or done at your place of work or on the off chance you'll do it at services. Like, if electric cars take off, gas stations will half die out unless they swap to only supply an electric. Which, if that's an argument for people against electric cars, that should be an argument for people to move to hydrogen cars. Because you would have hydrogen stations, which work exactly the same as gas stations, but like, a fucking hydrogen tank. It just makes sense. Why the fuck would they do it? I obviously don't have millions that I can invest into Toyota to fucking get a move on with it, but Toyota, get a fucking move on. I invested money by watching you in the WRC, okay? Fucking do it. Pranks. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.